Well, we're here now in, in Enniskerry and there's a few of, uh, of, of we just did a nice photograph just getting an idea of what Enniskerry is going through very similar to what Dalgany has been dealing with and, and obviously Greystones and when did you kind of first realise okay 165 houses mightn't work in Enniskerry? Oh I've been kind of watching development in Enniskerry for quite a while because there's um, a number of things that have been proposed so it's been a little bit sort of nerving because Enniskerry as you can see is sort of very green it's mountainous and um, it's quite historic it's got all the old ancient walls and whatnot so it's a very sort of I would have a passion for the village that I live in or just live outside and that I have the privilege to live in and I believe that the amount of people that come to visit it appreciate it for what it has to offer so um, I've been kind of watching this space for a while but in particular this um, Crookstown is uh, yeah, the Crookstown here. estate yeah. it was um, uh, it, sort of all of a sudden arrived you know COVID everybody's locked down nobody knows what's going on and suddenly there's this um, notification that there was planning approved for 165 houses which to me didn't ring true because I had made submissions onto the development plan in 2018 for Bray so I was like hold on you can't build 165 houses in one space that doesn't make sense so we started to investigate that and there's um, sort of a large community that are, are looking at it and we came together to develop the Enniskerry Alliance which is basically looking at this um, as how it is impacting the local um, population, the local infrastructure. Um, well, and that's it. That's the key to it. Is it's not so much that you know. Of course, it's wonderful that people get to live in a beautiful part of the country. But there is this idea that is very obvious with Dalgany, very obvious with here, that you would pretty much cripple, you know, the whole infrastructure of a small village by putting in hundreds of houses. As much as it's you know important to have houses for people, what's really going on here is just going to completely devastate some areas. Yeah, I, th like, I think it is, we all know it, and nobody is, is denying that houses are required, and quite a few of them. But the, the form of the development is, is what is actually, that's that's under scrutiny and under, I suppose, the, where the dissatisfaction comes. Uh, 165 houses contravenes um, our local development plan. So when Cairn Homes, which are the developers that have put in for planning for this, uh, got approval, they got it through on board Planola. So they, first of all, they contravened that planning and um, zoning um, on and this six. is strategic housing development which is yeah. anything over 100 houses you don't go to planning you go straight to board Panala, yeah. Yeah. And, and and this seems to be kind of a license to kill because there, there's so much of this going on in, in the country and certainly in w County yeah. Wicklow like I, I think the fundamentals of, of what they were trying to achieve by doing that makes sense but yeah. actually when you go into it like everything when you actually go down into individual cases you realize actually that's wholly inappropriate for the area that it's in it doesn't make sense to have 160 houses on a road that just about fits one car and um, there is no bus route on this road you have to walk about half a kilometre to get on one. Like I don't bring my children, they go to school in New Park in Black Rock and I leave yes. at ten past seven in the morning to put them on a bus. You know, it's yeah. it's it's nonsensical. Now, what you've had to do, and Dalgin did it already, is, 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 is go to a judicial review, which is yeah. expensive. I know in the Dalgin's case it was like thirty seven thousand. Here it's sixty thousand, it's a bit more complicated, a bit more to be done. But it is thankfully eighty five percent success rate in the country when these things are put forward. So I'm I'm kind of guessing or hopeful that you're hopeful that there, 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 something can yeah, be done I think here. Yeah, you, you can't be naive. Like, you wouldn't have to go to court if you were confident. Like, court is the thing where you don't know what the outcome is going to be. But there are enough, um, you know, there are enough reasons that are legislative and constitutional. And that's mm. what it's about. It's not really whether I like it or whether I don't like it. That doesn't really come into it. It is more about how the process came about. Um, you know the the where the actual planning application contravenes what is in the national legislation or the local development plan and um, with regard to eu directives and whatnot so it's in with regard to those that we are having the judicial review it's not about um you know the personal taste of of what yeah. the house looks like or how many there are or whatever right. you know it, it is very very specific about the five elements that don't actually match up constitutionally now we should say that, that there is always that notion that people feel well you know you're basically being snobbish and you don't want lots of people living in your lovely little village and that's the thing with Dalgany and, and Greystones maybe it's too late for Greystones but definitely the, the, it's not about that at all it is about you know what is there is so beautiful and so wonderful the idea that you would basically cover it in concrete and cripple whatever schools and, and traffic and we already have that problem quite a lot in Greystones that's really at the core of all this. 
Like, yeah, like I can. I don't know if you can see the sugar loaves there, but yeah. I'm putting them in there. And um, that uh, there's a poster from the 1960s that basically publicised Ireland with um, the tourist board that was painted by Paul Henry, who used to live in the area yeah. and is buried in the church just across the way. And if you kind of think, well, you know, that was our poster for tourism. Imagine, you wouldn't be able to paint that now if there's uh, 165 houses in that field, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you're right. It, yeah, you know, it, you can always look. Like I've been watching TV over the years when people are giving out about things or, or doing this you know save our village you sort of go ah yeah a bit of nimbyism there yeah not in my backyard I don't want it there but and maybe that is the case but mm. it's for the right reason right. it shouldn't be in this area you know thousands of people come out cycling over the weekends walking on the weekends it is a local national and international tourist village yeah. that it's a destination location I think as well then the recent, you know, the village was had the enchanted Disney enchanted. Yeah, yeah, Disney Disney enchanted. Yeah, yeah, like that. I think sort of was one of the things that makes you understand that actually it is got a specialness to it, and right. that should be that should be nurtured. You know, well, I believe it should be nurtured. You, I, I give out now, even still, about 1970s ribbon development, which was a big mistake. You know, we all go, oh God, what was that about? So you can't, like, if it happens, we can't turn it back. So we have to. We have to put it out that this shouldn't happen. Let's pretend I'm stupid. What's the ribbon, ribbon development? You know, in the 1970s, they were building little bungal the bungalow blitz. Okay. It was right. like every, you know, there was just bungalows built the whole way through Connemara. You've got these houses built, you know, they were given tax mm. incentives. And now you look at it and you see that the landscape is destroyed. And the landscape is part of our sense of identity. And, our, you know. I think in a nice touch, though, I think Kern planned to call the estate the Disenchanted Estate. So that's kind of nice, yeah, really, when maybe. you think of it. It does, so, so. <laughs> it does fit in. I was actually at the time when then, um, it must have come about, this came about, because I wrote to the Irish Times, uh, I said, you know, Disney knows something that we don't. Disenchanted <laughs> comes to, to uh, Enniscary Village. You know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, if you build 165 houses here and 200 over there, you certainly will disenchant the space. Uh, we will put in, um, yeah. as I said, the links to the donation. And, and just, you know, it, it affects more than just the people in Enniscary this is all about where we live and, and all of us sort of share this wonderful space yeah. and whether it's the Sugarloaf or whether it's the woods we walk in and all that it all becomes part of the of the same kind of circle of, of where we kind of just bring our children up and all that kind of stuff if we do help can we have the clock you know that you have in the main in the in the main square getting this scary can we have oh, yeah. that move to Greystones just as a yeah, kind of on a lens okay that'll be great okay we'll, we'll sort that out then then you have our support but it is, it's interesting <laughs> actually I think that's a really really good um, uh, point is that you know Enniscary is half an hour from Dublin City it's where people go to play it is the gateway to that garden that everybody that lives in very well, it's urban. a gateway to Greystones really when you think about it because you know that's really where they're going <laughs> trying to wind you up sorry go ahead it's working well yes yeah, so you better put a bridge you better widen the road put that's a bridge it, you know, that's it that's <laughs> it but you're right it is it is a place that, that people have a certain kind of escape to as opposed to they just end up being exactly where they left yeah that it is supposed to be the place that has a little bit of breathing space a little bit of green and a sense of that you're not actually mm. in an estate anymore you're out in the wilds you're out in the countryside you're at the foot of the mountains you're between the ocean and the mountains and it's like i think we should finish with a song <laughs> you're not getting that out of me <laughs>